deep belly breathing and then let you can place your hands on your sides and see if your sides are expanding as you inhale let them expand out to the sides and then exhale relax and release nice slow Place your hands on your back and see if your back's expanding into your hands. And I've been getting into affirmations lately, so if it feels good to you, you can repeat. You know, after a long week, some, a long work week, and being with your kids, a lot of times we're carrying a lot of stress and there may be some tension or pain, something like that. So. Um, I just want to say, I take ownership of my own healing process. You can repeat that in your head. And I am kind, I trust my body, and I am kind to my body. Can you tell me shoes? Where's your dad? He's walking to the field with one way. I was going to get that, but I can't run with untied shoes. You know how to tie your shoes. Yeah, but every time I do, it's like I'm going to start running me now. I've got my seven-year-old to tie my shoes, but she knows how to tie her shoes. Every time right. I do it, it's like I'm going to start running me now. Yeah. We're going to get down on the ground now um, and start with some core work. I like to do core work to kind of um, help protect your body later in the workout. So just go ahead and come down to your back. And we'll do some bridges. So, so bring your feet to the floor, knee, legs about hip width apart, and then knees in line with toes. And we're going to inhale, deep breath, and then exhale, squeeze your glutes, and come up into your bridge. And you can have your elbows grounded into the ground. Think about driving your knees over your toes. Really activate the glutes. Then you can come back down and we'll just do a few more of those. Inhale, exhale, draw in your core. Exhale to come up, squeeze your glutes. Good. Inhale down. Exhale, squeeze up. Inhale down, and you can go at your own pace, whatever feels good. Exhale, squeeze, glutes to come up. Keeping your hip level. Inhale, exhale, come up. Just do one more. And down. Then we'll go ahead and come up and we'll do some hip. Get our hip moving. And you can hold on to something if you need to, but this is going to be a single leg balance and then reach. And we're going to be going front, side, and back at a 45 degree angle. <laughs> and just really think about stabilizing here, not dropping your hips as you go. Gonna activate that standing leg. Find your arch in your foot, and we're gonna lift up and go forward, side, and then back about 45 degrees. Just trying to keep those hips level. And your standing leg's doing a lot of work to stabilize. Nice tall posture, and don't forget those deep breaths. Do one more. All right, I'm going to shake your legs out. April knows I'm not very good at counting. 
<laughs> I always lose track. All right, go ahead and get on your other leg. Find your foundation. Engage your arch. Keep that foot on the ground. And then you're going to bring their right leg up or the other leg forward, side, back. Forward, side. Try not to collapse that arch in the standing foot. One more. Okay, shake that out. We're just gonna do some serratus presses, which is great for posture. You probably remember these April where they're, um, instead of retraction of your shoulder blades, it's the muscle that pulls you through. It's good for reaching. Um, so what we're gonna do is come First, you can just do a couple of these, kind of activate it. So hands just out front. You feel that pretty subtle muscle, but it's very important. And then we'll come to the wall and we'll just do some, the wall push up. So you'll come to the wall, see very well, but you're just gonna do that same motion using your body weight. Just We'll do about 10 of those. I'll try to do it here so you can see. So it's not a push up, you're in a plank and then you're just protracting or opening your shoulder blades. Make sure your shoulders aren't coming up by your ears. Okay, good job. Now we're going to work on our mid or our lower trap. So for this one, you're going to come uh, face to the wall and you can stand about four inches or so from the wall. So your forehead will go to the wall and then we're going to come up, sliding our pinkies along the wall and then we'll reach off. So hopefully you'll be able to see me over here. It'll be and then you, if that feels okay, then you can lift off a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and turn our back to the wall now and do some angel wings. And if you want to do them on the floor, you can. If you don't have room on the wall, it's up to you. But it's a, this motion here. And you're sliding along the wall. Or the floor. And don't strain too hard. Make sure your core is engaged. You're just opening up those shoulder blades. Remembering to breathe. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and move on to some planks. So um, depending on where you're at, you can do them on the wall or a couch or a raised surface. Um, and you can do knees down or knees up, whatever. So I like forearm because my wrists get kind of irritated, but so shoulder over elbow, nice planted hands, or you can do the fist. 
and then think about nice long neck and a long line, straight line. And if this feels good, just breathe and engage your core. But if you wanna come up into a full plank, and go ahead and come up. And I'll start counting. Try to breathe even though you're engaging your core, still breathe and go ahead and relax down. Now we'll go to side plank. Work our side body. So you could do um, modified or you can do all the way up depending on where you're at. If you're going to do the modified, then this bottom knee will be down and you'll come up. If you want to go fully stacked, you come up. Whatever feels good to you. Nice long line, hips are in line with shoulders, knees. Remember to breathe. Just be feeling it along your side here. Looks good, April. Good job, Jacqueline. All right, come on down. Do the other side. Elbow under shoulder. Find your variation and then come up. Try to keep that shoulder strong here. Don't sink into it. And release. Very good. All right. And real quick, just to open up our thoracic spine, we're going to get into quadruped here. So hands and knees, knees under hips, shoulders, or hands under shoulders. And then one hand behind your head, and then in one unit, you're going to so inhale, exhale, open up. Inhale down, exhale, open. Good for posture. Two more of those. And keeping that core engaged as you open up. One more. All right. Go ahead and switch to the other side. Hand behind your head. Inhale. Exhale. Open up. Might notice that one side's a little tighter. Just going at your own pace. One more. All right, go ahead and stretch that in the child's pose real quick. Arms out, take a few deep breaths. <sighs> All righty, we're just going to warm up for some squats by doing some hinges. So if you have your weights, you can use those, but you don't have to. Um, it's hard to get the angle on these things. So think about your hinge. Find your pelvic neutral so you're not tipped forward or tucked under. And then we're just going to inhale down. 
Keeping a nice long neck, so your chin follows where your chest goes. And you squeeze with your glutes to come up. So inhale down, squeeze, come up. Squeeze, glutes, come up. If you want to add any weight, you can slide them along your leg, make it modify deadlift. So inhale, squeeze, come up. Like you're closing a drawer behind you, your bottom. Keeping your spine stable. And if you do have the weight, remember to keep your shoulders laced, drawn back, and engaged. Feel a nice stretch in your hamstring. Okay. And we'll go ahead and just do some body weight squats. And if you have a chair, you can use the chair sort of to judge, you know, distance, or you can just do them in the air, whatever you prefer. So just, we'll just start with feet, um, like about, hip width are a little wider. If you need to turn them out for comfort, that's fine, just don't go too far out. Um, and make sure your knees track over your second and third toe as you come down. So we'll start with our hinge. Start with the hinge and then lower. And um, squeeze, come up. Inhale, exhale, squeeze up. Hands can be here, or they can come out, come back. Lots of great functional exercise to work on, especially with all the sitting work you know, we do a lot of times. It's so good to get the glutes working. Wake them up. All right, now we'll go ahead and move on to some push-ups. So if you want to do, depending where you're at, um, how your core is doing and everything, you can do the wall push-ups and just stand away from the wall and get on your balls of your feet and come down. Or you could get on a raised surface like a counter or, um, couch, the edge of a couch, and just keep your body in that nice long plank. You might want to bring your arms down just a little, April. There you go. Squeeze your butt, your bottom, and your core, and then yeah, come down and exhale, press up. And just remember a nice long neck. You don't want to lead the way with your head. And your elbows will come out to around a 45 degree angle. And if you prefer to do the ground, you can certainly do the ground for more challenge. Okay. So the next exercise I don't do very often, but it's actually harder than I thought it would be. I don't know if you have anywhere to sit, like a chair. Um, but what we're gonna do are just straight leg raises. So you'll have one foot out in front. And then you're going to have it up, but you're just going to raise it straight up and then return. So you'll feel your quad as it picks up the leg. So 
like has the strength, you can hold it up a little longer to pause at the top. There's two more. This one was harder than I thought it would be. And then switch legs so your opposite leg comes out, extend it, and then just raise straight up. And you'll feel that quad engaging. All right, good job. And then we'll do one more set of push-ups. Whichever kind you prefer on the wall or the floor. Just remember that nice long plank. And then come down. Exhale up. All right, nice job. You can do one more set of the leg raises on each leg. Deep breath, raise up the leg, lift and lower. Bring us back to the leg raises. Okay. Very nice. Not muggy in here. All right, so next I've got um, diagonal reach. And if you have your a weight you want to hold, or you can do it without a weight. So you're just going to stand um, a little wider than shoulder width. And then as you reach to the side, you pivot with that leg. So this is a good functional movement just for working those reaching rotational muscles. Exhale. So just think of a diagonal line from your toe up your arm. Reaching for things all through the day. Good to keep these muscles mobile and strong. Remember to engage your core, protect your back. Fine. A couple more. All right. So the next one, um, a fairly wide squat. And you're going to come, if you've got something to hold or you can do it with no weight, you're just going to come. So think of your hinge and then lower and then raise up overhead and then back to starting. Hinge, lower, engage your core, your glutes, and raise up. Squat, engage that core, raise up. You don't have to go all the way down to the ground. Make sure you're not hunching as you do it. You want to keep your back neutral and come up. So don't be doing any of this. Thank you. 
find your breath, the movement. I like to exhale as I come up. Inhale. And then as your body gets used to this and your day-to-day -day tasks, you'll be moving a little easier. One more. All right. Let's do another set. Go ahead and take a few deep breaths. And we'll go back to the diagonal reach. So you'll go pivot that back leg to one side and down. Pivot. job. All right, back to one more set of those uh, squats to the front right. So we'll come, get your feet nice and positioned. Make sure your knees are tracking over your second and third toe. And we'll hinge, drop down, engage. And you can always do it without the front raise. Appreciate your body right now. Moving. Both looking great. All right, very nice. Let's see, is it really? How did it get to be? Oh, okay, seven. I thought I started at six for some reason. So we're gonna move into some neck stuff. My neck's been real tight lately. So, no reason. Most people have tight necks anyway, so. What we're gonna do is just start with some basic neck side bends. So drop to one side. Turn to center, drop to the other. Just check in if there's tightness on one side. And we're going to go forward and return to center. Drop down. Going at your own pace, you can hold it longer if it feels good. Neck muscles can get so tight, especially with stress and more computer work, phone. Let's go ahead and do a little neck extension so it'll come back. If it's painful, don't come back too far. Back up. And then lastly, we're going to just turn each side. And then in order to strengthen our neck muscles, actually, let's do a scaling stretch first. So you'll clasp your hands behind you sitting or standing, and then you're going to lower your right shoulder down and put your head to the left. And just feel that stretch along that side, and we'll hold this one a little longer. Breathe into that, and 
A little bit release. You'll stretch all alongside that neck. And then slowly come back to center. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Sort of engage this left shoulder down, and then the right ear comes to the right shoulder. And if you're meeting any pain, then just go ahead and stop. But if it feels like a good stretch, just go on with it. Okay, and this one's kind of a funny one, but um, the neck, well, chin tuck just sitting to kind of strengthen these front muscles that get weak from posture issues. So you're going to put your hand on your chin and you're going to um, push your chin back. It's kind of going to give you a stretch in the back of the neck. I think that's where I'm feeling it. Like you're giving yourself a double chin. So that's kind of, but don't. Hold your chin down, just keep it level. Then release. Do a few more of those. Just kind of this motion here. And then we'll go ahead and do, um, oh, here we go. That isometric neck. Strengthen the other neck muscles. What you're going to do is place your palm on your forehead and try to flex your neck down, but resist it with your hand. But you're just pushing into your, you'll feel these front neck muscles engage. Then release. You do that about five seconds each hold. So just push, hold. Try not to tighten up your upper back while you're doing that. And then we'll activate the other muscles in the back. We'll clasp our hands behind our head and try to extend back, but resist with our hands this time. So just do the five seconds, push back, and then release, keeping your chin level. And just resisting that backward motion. You can always do more of these at home or you know on your own, but I'll just try to get through the basic. And now we're gonna do that, but resisting it going down to the side with the hands. So go ahead and find your neutral, nice long neck, and then push. Release. Pushing your side of your head into your hands. One more. And relax. And then we'll do the other side. I just imagine if they have like bodybuilder equipment for your neck muscles. It could be funny. I guess some people do that. One more. All right, our necks are so strong now. Strong. Now we're gonna come down to the ground. We just a couple more neck things and then we'll do a stretch. Go. Let's see, nice We'll do a couple of the chin tuck head lifts. I know I was always making it pretty rubber. So you just lay on your back and you just barely raise your head. If you need to help yourself, you can lift a little bit. You don't want to strain too hard. So just lift and hold for like four or five seconds. And tuck head lift. So you're just bringing your head straight up. You're not arching it this way. 
and up, jutting it up. Nice, neutral, long neck. Exhale and raise your chin. And you'll feel all these front cervical muscles lifting your head. Those are the ones that get weak with all that forward head we do. Well, not everybody, but a lot of us. And don't not let your jaw get too tight with those. Okay. One will lay on one side, and the bottom one is going to extend out. And it's just the same thing, the muscles in the side of our neck. So we're just going to exhale, raise your head up. So it's probably not going to feel like too much, but make a side crunch for your neck. As long as you don't actually hear crunching, that would be bad. And we'll switch to the other side. And that neck mobility. Right. And then the last one is going to be on hands and knees for the neck. And we're just going to keep our head just level with the back. Nice long neck. Don't let it drop down. And then we're going to tuck your chin and just let it hang down. You're going to feel a stretch in the back. And then raise it back up to the flat. Just stretch. Make sure you're keeping your shoulders away from your ears. Okay. Let's go ahead and give it just some stretching. And since our pecs get real tight during the day, we'll go ahead and do a Pec stretch on the wall. If you have a doorway, that can be nice because you can lean into it. Um, but if you're just on the normal wall, what you'll have to do is just face the wall and have your arm up on the wall and then just turn away so you feel that stretch. And you can have it straight out or a little higher of an angle. Um, I like it a little higher so it stretches more of the upper pec minor. You're just going to lean into that and you'll feel stretch all through here and into your biceps too. Just breathe, do that releasing. Switch sides, face the wall, and then you're just going to turn your body away. Give a good stretch. Okay, this is like a modified child's pose we're going to go into next. So your hands will be on the wall and it's a good stretch for this upper back. Um, I don't know if you can see very well, but we'll just come up to the wall and just let your neck and everything hang forward. And you'll feel a stretch through your kind of upper back area. Uh, 
And on my right side, it's gonna lot tighter there. And just breathe, deep breath into your back, into your side, and down. A little bend in your knees, you go a little deeper if it feels good. All right, do a few neck rolls and come out of that one. And we'll go ahead and go into hip flexor stretch. You get so tight with all this sitting, running and walking and everything we do. So one foot forward, you come into a little bit of a lunge here. Yeah, toes facing forward, and you're just gonna think about tucking under this side here. If you want and it feels good, you can squeeze the glute on this back leg, and that'll give you more of a stretch in the front. Hold, full posture. Just breathe. Go ahead and switch sides. Take down into those hips, keeping them square forward. And then think about that tucking and squeezing up the back glute. Feel it stretch all down the front here. All right, come down to the ground now again. And stretch our glutes out, do all those squats. Down, bring one foot up, cross over the opposite leg, and then pull through and you'll feel a nice stretch through the back of your legs and the back of your glute here. Breathe and feel that. Letting go. One more deep breath and release. Go to the other side. Your leg comes up. Crosses over. Grab one underneath. You can bring it towards you as close as is comfortable. And the foot that's crossed over it can help if you keep it flat and in line with your toe, or I mean in line with your knee. Just breathing into that. Now we'll go into one of my favorites, the thoracic spine opener. So you're gonna lay on one side and your legs will be at 90 degree angles. Hands out stretched out in front of you. And then open up. We want the mobility to come from our upper back, not our lumbar. Oof. Just breathe and you can open a little farther. And you can put your, if it feels better, you can put your hand behind your head and open up that way. Or you can have it stretched out. Just don't push too hard. If you need resistance to just back off a little. Breathing. As you breathe, you can open up a little farther. Switch sides. And 
Knees out in front, arms up, stretch. Stretch my couch. So inhale, exhale, open up. To help keep your low back from doing too much of the moving, you can think about squeezing your knees together a little. Inhale and exhale, open a little further. That one feels so good. All right, what's left here? Do a few wrist stretches now. Um, so just put your hand comfortably out in front of you about shoulder height and just gently pull back. You feel a stretch there. Just to keep our wrists moving. If you're like me and you're texting all the time. Let that release, kind of roll it out to the other side. This way, it's a nice gentle stretch, hand facing down. Side. All right, and then the last stretch is going to be a better side stretch. So just I'm sure there's another name for this, but legs out in front, cobbler's pose, I guess. And you can have them out further. It'll be a different stretch depending how close they are to you. You just do what feels good, and then you're just going to inhale, pause, exhale, lean into that, stretch these inner thighs, breathing into your back, Go ahead and just come to cross leg and we'll do one more check in with ourselves as we close out. Just take a moment to breathe. These weeks they either go fast or slow. Some weeks are easier than others. But just remember to not be too hard on yourself. Take it day by day. So I'll, I'll close out with another affirmation. Um, you want to repeat to yourself, I embrace self-compassion. Sometimes it's easy to have compassion for others and we forget about having compassion for ourselves. I embrace self-compassion. Maybe you've made mistakes during the week or not been as productive as you want, but that's how I am a lot of days. So it helps to tell yourself, just remind yourself, hey, I love and approve of myself. I love and approve of myself. You see, you can make that true inside yourself. Check in with your body now and see how you're feeling compared to when you, before you started the the movement sequence. Anything feel more open, your breathing easier. Movement doesn't have to be hard. You don't have to make it a hard workout every time. Sometimes it's just so nice to slow down. Do some simple, simple movement. So you guys can unmute yourselves if you want. We're done. Mm -hmm. Glad you made it, April. You too, Jacqueline. <laughs> yeah, thank you.
Thank you. Yeah. Wanted to keep it pretty easy today. I think that's my theme for workout. I'm like, keep it easy. How do you guys feel after that? Yeah, it felt good. Good, yeah. Cool. How about you, April? <laughs> nice break from the little one. Yes. <laughs> Have you been getting in any runs? Or not too much? Oh, cutting out. You are? Yeah. Oh, good. Good. Girls are busy, but I'm running through my neighborhood at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Or the, yeah, the trails probably are busy. Yeah, I've been enjoying trail runs. You don't run into as many people. And you're out in the trees. <laughs> For some reason, I can go faster if there's like trees going by me. Yeah, the neighborhood has really slowed me down. Really? Yeah. Well, Jacqueline, how was your first week? Was that your first week at Daybody? Uh, I, I think it's the second. It's the okay. first week that I was seeing clients, so. Okay, cool. Well, good to have you. I'm just still, I was just getting settled in before the pandemic, so. <laughs> still trying to get things going. Yeah. yeah. Well, any um, questions or concerns, anything you can think of from the? No. All right, well, take care of yourselves and have a good weekend. You too. Sorry, I didn't just prepare for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Are you gonna be teaching on here too, Jacqueline? Teaching now. You do yoga, right? Huh? You t do you teach yoga or you just do yoga? Just do it. Yeah. Okay, cool. I, don't okay. Teach. I, I would like to learn to teach, but yeah, it sounds like you're busy enough. So for now, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Get back in touch when you can, April. I know you're super busy with kids and stuff, but um, evening times like. Yeah, all right. Well, I missed you. <laughs> all right, bye.